Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Celebration Community Church. We are a church of traditional worship with extravagant welcome and hospitality. We are so glad that you are here with us this morning. And a special welcome to those who are visiting with us online this morning through YouTube or Facebook. We're glad that you're here too. There's several things we want you to know about this morning as we gather for worship and as we prepare for our week together. If you'll look in your order of worship, the gathering is occurring again this Wednesday night. We have a special speaker this coming Wednesday night. Charlie Johnson, our friend, will be here with Pastors for Texas Children. He's going to be talking about public education and things that we can be doing. So, And Charlie's just a great speaker. So even if you're not interested in the topic, you just want to come and hear him. So that's at 5.30 on Wednesday night. Use the Red Book, sign up for dinner. We have a wonderful dinner, and then we have that time together afterwards. Uh, so please do that. If you're visiting with us as well, in addition to putting your name in the Red Book, grab a yellow card and just put your contact information on that so that we can be in touch with you. We promise not to overwhelm you, but we will send you some things about celebration. You can put that card in the offering plate. Let me say thank you to folks who worked on the letter writing last Sunday. That was an incredibly successful event. Our Equity and Inclusion Committee led that. It was Letter Writing for Justice, and we had Diane looking for you. There you are. We had, what, about 50, 60 folks here from various churches throughout the area in order to do letter writing on LGBTQ justice issues, on gun issues, on help me, what else? Jails, yes, I don't know why I forgot that, on, on issues with jails and prisons. So we're real grateful for folks who came and did that. There is a golf tournament coming up in about two weeks. Barb, I'm looking at you. You don't look totally frazzled yet. Although I think you're starting to get there a little bit. The uh, deadline for that, we still have room for you. If you are a golfer, or if you think you're a golfer, if you've ever held a golf club. No, I'm not going to say that because I've held a golf club. You don't want to see me on the course. But in any case, the deadline for signing up is this Friday, the 5th. And we still have room for... Uh, players and for teams, we'd love for you to come and sign up. This is a great event. It's a fundraiser for the church, but it's also just a great way to be together and have some fun and be a community with each other. That event is on May the 20th, which is two weeks from yesterday. So put both of these on your calendars. I hope you'll sign up for it. We have a new brochure for you. This is our Opportunities brochure. Every Sunday I talk about chances that we have for you to volunteer for different things, different ways to engage in our community of faith. And I'll point you again to the uh, back of the order of worship because you'll see some of those things there. We're always looking for ushers, always looking for folks to help with Altar Guild. There are other ways that you can engage. You see a wonderful choir up here. If you sing or you think you can sing or you want to learn how to sing, this is not a bad place to try it out. So talk to Marcy about that. These brochures that were in the back and get one of these. Whether you're new to celebration or not, especially if you're old to celebration. Because you think you know it all, but sometimes you get surprised. So get one of these opportunity brochures. Look for the chances that you have to be engaged in our community of faith. I am so glad to be here with you this morning. There's no place I'd rather be than right here, right now, with each one of you. Let's worship God together. Lift up your hearts. Please join me in a call to worship. Can you hear the voice of God? We hear God calling us by name. Are you troubled or distressed? <laughs> we come here to find a place to rest for a while. Come and find a guide who knows these lands. We come to praise our shepherding God, whose pathways and doors lead to life. God of all the sheep. Those who remain close to you and those who stray. Those who are always faithful and those who are lost. Be with us today. Help us take a look at our lives and our relationship to you. Bring us close. Draw us in. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able as we begin worship with song this morning. We are going to sing together. They'll know we are Christians by our love. You may read the text above on the screen projected, or if you'd like to follow along in your hymn, it is page 494, verses 1 and 2. They'll know we are Christians. <laughs>
reading from the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to sing along as we uh, meditate on the words above, Jesus' name above all names, as we prepare for prayer and the choir will lead us. The scriptures teach us that when those early followers of Jesus would gather together, they devoted themselves to several things. And one of those things were to the prayers. The prayers. They took seriously the need to cultivate their relationship with God. They took seriously the need to be aware of the needs that others in their community of faith had. They took seriously that God would hear them. And we do that here. We gather for prayer on Sunday mornings because we also devote ourselves to the prayers. If you will take your order of worship, you can look on the back. You'll see the names of those we want to be praying for. There's some we don't name every Sunday in that extended list of extended family, but those people are important to us, and I want to call your attention to them. Some of these folks are family members of ours. Some of them are close friends. Some of them are friends who live far away. But all of them are on that list because somebody in this space, somebody in this church cares about them and wants us to pray for them. We have members of our close community of faith that we pray for this morning. We continue to pray for our brother Bill Elliott. Continue to pray for Diane Peterson Smith, for Holly Pills, John Corpus, Liz Rodriguez, all of whom are either struggling with or recovering from different medical issues. We pray for those in our fellowship who are dealing with chronic issues. That's part of our lives sometimes, and it's important we not forget them. We pray for Ann Jordan and Charles Neal, for Claudia Knowles, for David Brock, for Dee White and Joyce Pringle, for Di Shaw, for Glenda Gardner, for Pat Stafford, for Ricardo Riley, for Robin Coyer, for Roseanne Cerrotti, and for Scott Green. And we pray for one another. 
as I look out and see your faces. I don't know what's happening in your lives other than just to be grateful to see you today. But I pray for you, and I invite you to pray for one another as well. Let us bow our heads together. God, this is the moment when we devote ourselves to speaking with you and offering to you our needs and concerns, bringing to you our joys and our thanksgivings. God, this is also the moment when we remember that we can devote ourselves to the prayers every day. In a moment when a face crosses our mind, when a name comes to our heart, when something we are deeply grateful for arises, we can offer those to you as well. And so God, we invite you, we ask you to accept our offering of prayer this morning. Doing your good and graceful and merciful work in the lives of those we have named and in the lives of those we have not named, but whom we hold in our hearts. We ask this believing with all of our hearts that you hear us. In the name of our risen Savior, Jesus. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching to the community, to their shared meals, and to their prayers. A sense of awe came over everyone. God performed many wonders and signs through the apostles. All the believers were united and shared everything. They would sell pieces of property and possessions and distribute the proceeds to everyone who needed them. Every day they met together in the temple and ate in their homes. They shared food with gladness and simplicity. They praised God and demonstrated God's goodness to everyone. The Lord added daily to the community, to those who are being saved. This is the word of the Lord. And thanks be to God.
certainly know that those Sundays where I should just say amen and sit down. <laughs> <clears throat> I need to make a confession to you. I am not a foodie. My idea of good food extends no further than the Montgomery Street Cafe down on Montgomery Street. <laughs> or if in a pinch, a nearby Waffle House. And by the way, I don't know that I should admit this or not, or not, but at one time I had eaten in every Waffle House in Fort Worth. That was a mission I had. <laughs> Listen, I love diners. I was doing a conference in Philadelphia several years ago and responsible for all the food. Never put me in charge of the food. You're going to end up in a diner. Well, in Philly, you've got all these great restaurants. I was in a hotel right across the street from the City Tavern, which is one of the oldest public restaurants in the United States. Did I go eat there? Of course not. I went four blocks down to the Snow White Diner on Broad Street. Vinyl booths, four mica counters, chrome bar stools, the smell of home fries and coffee and cheese steaks. Y'all are ready for me to stop so you can go to lunch right now. <laughs> Neighborhood people talking about American Idol, their kids, their work, or their lack of work. I think that's like heaven. All in a place where you can get something to eat. You know, I think that's kind of like church. Eating is such an important part of our time together. We eat at the gathering on Wednesdays. That's another plug for it. Make sure you sign up before you leave today. <laughs> we go out to lunch with friends after church. In my last church, I was shocked when I found out they never ate together. Well, we fixed that. We instituted a Wednesday evening meal like the gathering and other celebratory dinners. We had Thanksgiving community dinners, Fourth of July community picnics, seasonal deacon dinners, and a potluck anytime somebody died. Now, it's not like I wanted someone to die to have a potluck. <laughs> and I don't understand the connection between food and death in the South. But you know, I didn't really care as long as Mama Doc brought her chicken and dumplings and her coconut cake. Okay. And we eat as part of worship. At times, our entire worship center is on meal. Last week, I mentioned the agape meal that I'm part of. This is a meal at Broadway for unhoused folks who live in the community, who need a meal, who need a place to gather. We begin every agape meal with these words. The early church met and shared an agape meal. Agape is the New Testament word for love. The love that God shows us in Christ, the love that we share in Christ, and the love that is the reason for this meal. And then we follow with a series of questions. Do you know why we gather this evening? And they respond, yes, we come to share a meal together. And then I respond with, is that all? And they share, no, we also come to express our faith and be with Jesus. With those simple words, we address the reason that the church has gathered for over 2,000 years. Just as it did in the very beginning, as Ray just read to us from the book of Acts. The believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the community, to their shared meals, and to their prayers. Their shared meals. Eating is a central part of Jesus' work on earth. If you read the Gospels, it seems that all he ever did was eat. Let me give you some examples. When the religious leaders saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Or another one. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry, and they began to pluck the heads of grain and eat. Jesus said to them, You don't need to send them away. You give them something to eat. Or on one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of the leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. Or this one, they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Or finally, this one. On the third day, there was a wedding feast in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Parties, dinners, drive through fast food. Okay, that's the way I interpret, walking through a grain field, plucking them. I know it's a stretch, but work with me here, okay? Theologically, I think it's sound. And eating with all kinds of people. Tax collectors, prostitutes, strangers, foreigners, women, the recently dead, and the very ones who would betray him. And Jesus loved to talk about eating. He talked about banquets and feasts and suppers and weddings. He used eating to describe the community of God more than any other analogy. 
Finally, there was that moment on the night before he died when Jesus sat down for what seemed like the last time with his friends. Now, our picture of that final meal is influenced by Da Vinci's Last Supper, but it was far more than Jesus and 12 men all on one side of a formal table. This meal was in a home where they had met before, a home with all of the bustle and activity that you remember from large dinners at home with children running amok and multiple conversations occurring simultaneously. It was not the set piece that we think of today. They were sharing a meal. However, it was not the final meal after all. Remember the night of his resurrection, Jesus met his followers again in what was likely the same room, and he broke bread with them. And that story continues as Jesus encounters followers on the road, and they go home, and they break bread together. He sees followers on the beach, and he cooks fish for them, and they eat together. So it was only natural that his followers in the book of Acts would continue to share a meal together. But why? Because they had been transformed. They had been changed. The shared meals became the place where they could express their faith and be with Jesus. It was when they shared their meals and their possessions and the apostles' teaching and their prayers that they experienced the love of Jesus again and again and again. Donna Butler Bass wrote, What if Monday Thursday was that? The last supper of the old world, the last meal under Rome, the last meal under any empire, and it was also the first feast of the kingdom that has come. The first meal of the new age, the world of mutual service, of reciprocity, of equality, of abundance, generosity, and unending thanksgiving. Pass the cup, keep it going hand to hand, filled and refilled time after time. This night is the final night of dominion, the final night of slavery. And this night is the first night of communion, the beginning of true freedom. I will no longer call you servants, but I call you friends. The first feast of the kingdom that has come. In social settings, meals are often how we separate others. Remember middle school? Or if you're like me, you really don't want to remember middle school. But cafeteria, you had the cool kids table, the jock table, the nerds table, the misfits table, and you had my table over there. In the church, we've had gatekeepers who are happy to assign us to our tables or to tell us that there is no table available to you at all. They've developed rules about who can and can't sit at what they believe is their table. They admit only the morally pure, the doctrinally correct, and the culturally acceptable. But they forget something, these gatekeepers. They forget that gates swing both ways. These shared meals in the church in Acts served as a gate that swung wide open and brought all of those tables together, again, sort of like all of us in this room. And the meals aren't only about how we live together now. They are a picture of our future. I've participated in three funerals in my time here with you. Each funeral has been moving in its own unique way. But they all share one thing in common. In them, we release our loved one to what we refer to as a new life in the presence of God. Now, I don't go into detail as to what that life will be like. I remember with Catherine and I, before we got married, we would have these theological conversations. It's amazing we ever got married. <laughs> and we'd end up talking about heaven. And I, because, not necessarily because I believed it, but because I like to take a stand in opposition, I am a bit of a contrarian. I would always say, I believe in streets of gold. Well, I really don't believe in streets of gold. I think it's a lovely description of something that is just beyond our imagination. I believe that the life that follows and the life at the end of time is a banquet. Greg Carey wrote, What happens in the kingdom? The Gospels really don't say much. But one thing going on is eating. Dining with Abraham and the other patriarchs 
The kingdom is like a feast after all. In Luke, the parable of the banquet follows a dinner guest exclamation. Blessed is anyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Perhaps every time we eat together as a church. Including and especially when we share this bread and this cup. We share in a preview of Jesus' promise that we as followers would eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. It is at the table that the broken social order of today which declares who is in and who is out is healed by the invitation to sit down and eat. In our worship, we extend an invitation to the table. An invitation that I believe reflects the words of Jesus in the Gospel of Luke. When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they might invite you in return. And then you would be repaid. But instead, when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed. Because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. This is why we gather. To share a meal and express our faith in Jesus. At the table, we become the community of faith. At all of our tables, we become the community of faith. And in that community, there is a place for all of us. This is the good news. This is the gospel of Jesus. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Please pray with me. Generous life-giving God, you sent Jesus that we might have life and have it abundantly. In response to this great gift, we now offer ourselves and our resources. May these gifts help us as a church to be your voice, calling all people to abundant life and to their true identities as your beloved. Amen.
Scott played a moment ago, the words, the closing words of that song are, that's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you want to pass it on. And I think about the words that I shared a moment ago when Diana Butler Bass said that in those meals they passed the cup and filled it and passed it and passed it and passed it. And I think about that cup being passed to us over 2,000 years of Christians passing the cup until it is in our hands this morning. Of Christians breaking the bread around the world in worship today in so many different languages and so many different kinds of bread. And yet passing that bread and passing that bread until that bread is in our hands today. Because that's what we share this morning when we gather at Christ's table. Is a cup and bread that both is not our own and is ours specifically. Because this table is open for you. Some of us believe that when we take the bread and drink from the cup, that Christ is truly and literally present. Some of us believe that when we take the bread and drink the cup, we remember how Christ has given his life for us. All of us believe that when we gather here together to take the bread and drink the cup, that Christ is with us and Christ goes with us. Amen. This morning we will be passing communion to you. If those who are helping serve communion will come forward. When you receive the bread and the cup, hold on to it for a moment, please. We will share that together. So I invite you to join with us as we take the cup that has been passed to us from those very first followers of Jesus as we break the bread that was broken for us by those very first followers of Jesus.
The scriptures teach us that on the night before he died, Jesus sat down at dinner with his friends. And at the beginning of the dinner, he took a loaf of bread. He blessed it, and then he broke it into pieces, and then he handed the pieces of bread to his friends. And he said to them, just as I give you this bread, so I give you my life. This is the bread of life, the body of Christ. Take and eat. At the end of the meal, Jesus took a cup. He filled it with wine, and then he shared that cup with his friends. And he said to them, this cup represents a new way of living, of loving one another, of following me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, remember me. This is the cup of grace, the blood of Christ spilled for us. Take and drink. Let us pray. It is in eating the bread and sharing the cup that God, we experience again and again and again your deep, deep love for us. Whether it is in remembering how Jesus gave himself for us, whether it is in remembering how he has drawn us together, whether it is in anticipating what it will be like on that great and glorious day we gather at the Feast of the Lamb. When we take the bread and the cup, we remember. Amen. Amen. They don't know that I'm going to do this, but Drew and Olivia, I want you to come down really quickly before we do the closing song. These chords have been sitting up here on the altar this morning as a reminder of Christ's love that we carry with us everywhere that we go. If you guys come down here in front of the altar, and I'm not going to cry, um, <laughs> uh, both of these young, wonderful people uh, mean so much to me. Olivia, you've been singing here for four years. Drew, you've been here for three years. And um, this is a chord for them to wear as they walk across the the stage for graduation this coming Saturday at TCU, <laughs> and um, it is a symbol of the rainbow, a symbol of our community. Um, in the Old Testament, after the great flood, God puts a rainbow in the clouds as a reminder of his promise to us, and you have both been a rainbow in many clouds to me. And as we close in worship, I want you to wear this that you can carry Christ's living hope with you. <laughs> Join me in congratulating them on their graduation. I love you guys so much. I'm going to invite you to remain standing as we're going to close and worship together. Stay standing. Um, and we're going to sing together living hope.
some of us were resisting doing this during the song. It's okay if you want to do that too, because hallelujah, Jesus is our victory. When I came here, Pastor Doreen told me that folks like to get together and eat. That's part of why I preached that sermon this morning. And I remember at the gala back in January, Pastor Carol saying that the reason we had church at 10 is so we could beat the Baptist to the Mexican Inn. <laughs> so part of my benediction to you to this, to today is this. Look around. Find someone to go eat with. Don't leave anybody out. Because Christ's table, as we know, is open to all of us. Including the tables of Christ that gather at the Mexican Inn, or Papa Cito's, or Szechuan, or any of those other restaurants we love so much. Because it is in the gathering at the table that we share our faith in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.